Hello and welcome back to New Zealand Miller Foray episode 3. What are we painting today? Looks like the little Maori shapes um, just below there, classic design uh, in the classic Maori colours which is the red, black and white. So I've dived in with the crimson. Oh no, I decided my brush needs a little clean. There we go, this is the Bonza brush cleaner that I have, love it. Gets out all the old dried up paint, rejuvenates the um, bristles. This is my square ended brush. I did start to use it here, then decide that really this this job requires the small pointy brush only. So yeah, I ended up just using the one brush. So with the black gaps that we're going to leave, what it does for us is, is gives us um, definition between one area and the next to really have the design show through in the final result it also gives us somewhere to stitch later on we stitch in the black gap uh, to secure the whole piece and uh, gives us a path to travel around with our quilting to be able to work our quilting into different areas now i can see i just checked the pattern there to see what goes under and what goes over i've painted over the fern fronds but I know that I'll be able to paint those on top later, so that's not a problem. So I'm constantly referring back to that um, paper pattern. It's actually sitting next to me. You just can't see it slightly off camera there. Um, just to make sure what I'm seeing with my tracing is what's right. So I've washed that brush well. I've moved on to the pointy brush and I think I'm going to be diving into the white now. Yes, the pearl white. And you can see this covers on black without a problem. So when you're painting, if you don't hit the mark completely with as far as your panda pencil mark, if you've made a nice flowing line with that paint, it doesn't matter if it's gone over the panda pencil. You know, that little bit of variation doesn't matter. Um, we're looking for a smooth flowing line more than it being perfect to the original pattern. So the width of this brush is actually just the right width for these shapes. And you can see how I push that brush down onto the job to make the bristles spray, sp spray, splay, splay out <laughs> to give me that width of certain areas. But that teeny little black gap gives us that definition of that shape. Now I've got the pewter, which is like a dark silver. It kind of acts like a grey, so it's a really good neutral colour. So it's perfect in these little kind of shadow areas of this shape. Really gives it a sort of three-dimensional kind of look. You've got to always be careful about your hand resting in the wet patch because then the paint transfers. So I'm always very aware of um, if my wrist is resting on a wet patch of paint. Um, yeah, you just got to practice being aware of that kind of thing. I've gone in with the burgundy. But I think I'm going to change my mind. Yes, yeah, so I've put a bit of burgundy in each of those spaces and then I'm getting the crimson again and mixing them together a bit on the job just to get a bit of a blend. I 
So while that paint is wet, you can blend the colours. If that first colour, the burgundy, if it dried, well, you can paint over it, but you're not blending into it. So sometimes you have to add some of the colour back again to try and get that nice blend. Just that little variation there. Just found somewhere that needed to be painted based on the uh, looking at the pattern. Wash that brush. I think that's it for today. See you next time.